Hi everyone, how are you doing? In this video, let's look at five signs and symptoms that you may be experiencing, which are a telltale sign that you have some kind of bite disharmony or bite malalignment. So my name's Gers, I'm a cosmetic and implant dentist based near London in the UK. And I see a lot of patients who have problems with their bite. Now this is not going to be an alarmist video because the vast majority of bite problems go under, undiagnosed, okay? The, 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 the whole concept of a perfect bite is, is kind of misleading because there is no perfect bite. I mean, when we do our full mouth cases, which we, we, we do fairly regularly, we set our patients up in something which we believe is a perfect bite. But a lot of studies have shown that after 5, 10, 15 years, that bite slips a little bit. Okay, so they haven't, they started off with a perfect bite, but they may not have an absolutely perfect bite. But this is not a problem. Okay, uh, the human body can compensate with a little bit. Now, saying this, for some people, if they've got a bite disharmony, then they can get a lot of problems and signs and symptoms of this. So let's look at these all in order. Let me give you the five most common of these right now. So the number one sign and symptom of a bite problem is that your teeth just keep breaking. Little bits just keep chipping off. It may be at the front, it may be at the back. It may be that um, these teeth are heavily filled and they can become a lot weaker if they're, they're heavily filled. But typically what we find is if a tooth, well, if teeth just keep breaking every six months or a year, you've got another tooth chipped somewhere, it, the problem is within the bite somewhere. And quite often these are people who have lost back teeth and the other teeth are now taking a different type of load. They're not actually overloaded, but it's more of a sideways force, which is a little bit complicated to, to understand, but I will try and explain it later in this video. But the number one sign of you know, a bad bite is teeth keeping on breaking. Now, before I jump into all the others, let me just quickly explain what I mean by a good bite and a bad bite. Now, we have to understand that all our teeth will come together in a certain way, okay? When we close our mouth, they'll come together. But we also need to understand that we have a jaw joint which is flexible. So our jaws can actually come together in a lot of different ways. And what we want to achieve when we're creating these perfect bites is that the jaw joint is in a neutral position. What I mean by that is it's in its most comfortable position. If all the muscles around it were allowed to relax, the jaw would sit in a certain position, okay? And then what we can do is just relax the jaw. So what I do in surgery is I ask my patient to relax as much as possible and I'll just rock their jaw up and down, okay? And I can feel when all the muscles are relaxed, okay? We can't do this for everyone. Some people have got really tight jaws, but if, you, if you're at home and you're watching this and you want to relax your jaw, you know, just get Get, just find a quiet place, okay, and just rock your jaw up and down, concentrating to relax all the muscles. And what you'll find in this position is that typically one tooth will touch before everywhere else. And then you're able to, for that one tooth to touch and everything slides into what you're familiar with as a comfortable bite. Now, if you've got no slide, that's, that's great. It means that your bite is pretty much perfect as it is. Um, but if your teeth do slide a little bit, it just means that we've got some slight disharmony. And most often we can just actually do a little bit of tooth adjustment just to get rid of that slide and you're back into perfect bite again. Now, because the this slide has caused the movement in muscles in, in your jaw positions. It's, it's likely that one or two of your jaw joints are slightly out of position now and the muscles are slightly uh, under tension. This for some people can cause headaches and migraines and a, a, lo a lot of kind of jaw headache issues, okay, which they may not think are actually tooth related, but quite often they are. Now, this is fairly rare. I might see about two patients a year who we do this whole jaw resetting procedure on and suddenly, the, you know, the, they find everything is a lot more comfortable. 
it's definitely possible and if you're having ongoing headaches and and jaw pains and you can't figure out what it is and you're, you're sick of taking painkillers for it you know find a dentist who knows about the bite and understands the bite in a lot of detail because quite often you can just have something called a deprogrammer made and just use it for a week and see if that fixes your your jaw problems because all this deprogrammer does is lets your jaw relax okay it's something that sits typically on the on the front teeth and when you bite together you can't bite on your on your back teeth it's a removable thing just wear it overnight or a couple of hours in the day and see what kind of relief if anything you get if you get relief with that then chances are you have a bite problem and there's a whole number of ways that, that it can be addressed another really common thing which people complain about is thinning of their front teeth okay and this is sometimes leads on to chipping of their front teeth and this is usually because of something called a restriction in the envelope of function now don't worry if that if you don't get that let me explain it let's draw a diagram if we were to cut you in half down the middle and we can see the top and the bottom teeth this is roughly what we would see and when we say a bite problem there's two aspects of the bite there's the bite when you bite together the position that all your teeth are in but more important than that is the movement of your lower jaw against your top teeth when you chew when you eat when you speak these kind of things and what we what we can create is this idea of envelope of function okay so some people when they chew their jaw will move forward and they'll come in a lot okay so th these people we say they've got a shallow envelope of function whereas some people just bite straight up and down these people have a very steep envelope of function so if you've got a very steep envelope of function everything's fine but if you've got a shallow envelope of function then there is a possibility that you're top and your bottom teeth are colliding ever so slightly when you're chewing eating and talking and this can cause wearing of your front teeth okay typically top um, six teeth so three to three and bottom three to three as well and I see this a lot but in 90% of cases we just leave it because these things can quite often be self-limiting and what that means is they just stop by themselves you see your body is trying to just wear the teeth away to a point where it's it's comfortable and this point typically happens quite early on so I used to see tooth wear and you know you, you would think oh I need to do something about this but you nowadays we quite often unless it's a big problem for the patient like um, this case here um, if it's a lot if it's very minor then we'll just leave it we'll take photos and study models and just see is it getting worse every six months and and if it's not getting worse then it's probably stable and it's fine now one thing that I do see quite a lot of and this is especially because of the kind of dentistry we do where we're treating very complicated cases where a lot of teeth are missing is we see a collapsed bite. Now what I mean by collapsed bite is when you are missing a lot of back teeth you, you, you reduce the number of actual biting teeth and what happens is your jaw will overclose. This can have cosmetic effects like this distance from your chin to your nose reduces it can accentuate lines on your face um, it can ex make your chin look more pronounced because everything's just hinged closed a little bit more uh, but more importantly it actually causes a lot more fractures in the teeth you can see in this photo here this guy's lower teeth are almost touching his gums at the top now if he had all of his natural teeth this would not be the case because his top teeth would support his bite but now he's lost so many either top or bottom teeth his bite has overclosed he's got a collapsed bite so in this particular situation what we did he, we, he had all of his top teeth done we did an all in four treatment there and we reopened his bite you can see that all his crowns which another dentist has done has they they've been made to this collapsed bite because there's you can see there's a step from his natural teeth to the crowns so what we did was did his whole top arch 
um, with an all on four implants and then we change the individual crowns to this new height. So we've opened up the bite and we've got a good contact all the way around and this will act, help ensure he gets much less problems in the long term. And another sign that there may be a bite issue is kind of related to the tooth chipping. You remember we said that we've got this envelope of function and sometimes the lower teeth can have this micro force, you know, just connecting against the, the backs of the top teeth. Well, in some people, this can actually cause movement in the top teeth. And as your top teeth, because they're getting a force from the back, as they move forward, what can sometimes happen is you can get a spacing between teeth which you never used to have so again typically if we lose some back teeth there's more pressure at the front and this can cause the teeth to to drift forward usually it's completely painless it's just a cosmetic thing which can be picked up but the root cause of it is the bite now I would say about 80% of people who come in and say and tell me that they've got a bite problem, they usually don't have a bite problem. And bite problems are, are very difficult to, to kind of diagnose. You need to go to a dentist who's, who is very experienced in treating the whole mouth as a whole. Because if your dentist is just looking at individual teeth and treating those, then they're not looking at the whole system. They're not looking at the bite as a whole. Typically, if we're going to address a bite problem and the bite problem is causing significant damage, then we have to look at everything. Remember, I said 90% of bite problems are very mild and usually don't need any treatment at all. Or if they need treatment, it's very mild treatment, maybe just adjustment of the, the bite a little bit. Now, one thing that I will say is that a lot of dentists, when they see tooth wear and they think there's a bite issue, they will prescribe a soft night guard, okay? And this night guard is basically just like a gum shield to separate the teeth. This is not treating the bite problem. It's not resetting your jaw in a more comfortable position for your jaw joints. Remember, that was our, we're looking at the jaw joints when we look at the a perfect bite, not how your teeth bite together. So by having this kind of mouth guard, all you're doing is creating something in between the teeth that you can chew through, okay? It's, it's, a, it's like a sacrificial thing which you might have to get replaced every year or two years or something like that. So that is one way of kind of stopping the problem getting worse and it will protect your teeth. It's a lot cheaper to replace a mouth guard than it is to have, you know, full mouth restorations. Um, a better way is to have something like a, a Michigan splint or something like that, okay? And there's so many different names for this kind of thing. Um, if I mention it in this video and you ask your dentist, he may do what we're talking about, but he may not understand because it's called something else uh, where you are. But essentially what this is, is like a mouth guard it clicks into the top teeth but it's got a, a, a position for you it's got indentations for your lower teeth to sit in and this is made by finding the com comfortable position of your jaw joint and seeing how your teeth would bite together if your jaw was still in this comfortable position okay so it's it is hard and it's something that you typically you would wear at night but it helps keep and support your jaw in its most comfortable position. It's the least expensive way to address a bite problem, um, other than the, the soft night guard, which I don't really think is addressing the problem, it's, it's just delaying it. So with this bite guard, I don't do many of them because typically our patients come in looking to, to do everything uh, with porcelain restorations and things like that. And that's, that's really the gold standard. But I know it's not for everyone because it's so expensive. But having this that Michigan splint or, or um, a bite guard made in something called centric relation, that's probably the most cost effective way to kind of just keep your symptoms at bay, especially if you don't want to go through all of the treatment to, to address your bites more comprehensively, okay? So this is a difficult uh, thing to talk about because it's a very difficult thing to explain. I hope you got something out of this. And if you've got questions and comments, you know, you can always leave them below. I will read all of them and try and answer them all as well, okay? So until next time, guys, take care.